All right, well, just about set to get game or the game two underway for the day. Men's soccer coming up between North Greenville and Brevard. If you just joined us recently, the women's team was able to hold on. The solo goal by Lindsay Tootin was the only one of the game, and North Greenville defeated Brevard 1-0. So just about to start the men's game. Uh, we will have a pregame interview in just a moment with head coach Chad Gefeller. All right, and we will go to that now. Thanks, Alan. This is Gabrielle Finale reporting live with the North Greenville Sports Network. Here at the men's first soccer game versus Brevard, I'm here with Coach Chad Gefeller. Coach, thank you so much for letting me interview you. Just a quick question for you before the game. Seeing um, your players practice, what can you say that they're going to bring to the field this year that they didn't have last year? Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about our team this year. Uh, we, we're missing uh, some pieces last year, and uh, and we have those. So it's it's going to be exciting to see them play. I'm looking forward to, to, uh, to the game tonight. Thank you so much. Back to you, Alan. And that was Gabby Finelli with the pregame interview. Short one, but that's all we needed to really know. So it uh, should be an exciting season for the Crusaders. So you can see we are once again at Pepsi Stadium in Tigerville, South Carolina. And uh, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, mentioned during the women's broadcast that we are now in 1080p. Uh, we did, apparently some uh, people did have a few issues with the connection, so we did bump down the settings just a little bit. So hopefully that's been resolved. Uh, but if it hasn't, then uh, let us know on the social stream. Um, if you have any questions, uh, then just just um, let us know, and uh, we'll answer them to the best of our knowledge. Uh, we've been asked about recruiting before for certain sports. Don't have a ton of information about recruiting. Uh, you know, with Division II, it's, it's kind of tough to keep up with all that. But, um, you know, any, any questions that you have, we'll, we'll try to uh, answer to the best of our knowledge. But... Um, just about set for the national anthem today. Looks like North Greenville will be in the solid black jerseys and Brevard in the white with blue stripe. North Greenville certainly looking to improve from where they were last season. It was a perfect season, but unfortunately in the wrong column. Did not come away with the victory last season, but on the bright side, nowhere to go but up. So, you know, that's something. We'll see if they can start off this season with the victory. Brevard didn't fare a whole lot better, but did have four wins for the season, 13 losses, one tie. Their leading scorer last season was Sergi Monso, who Good scored evening, five goals for the season to Pepsi Stadium on the campus and 20 of shots on goal. Where Christ makes a difference for today's regular season match between the Brevard College Tornadoes and your North Greenville Crusaders. For today's starting lineups, first for their Tornadoes. <laughs> midfield number two, Caleb Hall. At defender, number five, Omar Jimenez. At midfield, number eight, Gabriel, Gabriel Garcia. At forward, number nine, Andrew Galowich. At midfield, number 10, Camilo Sosa. At midfield, number 15, Alec Gettle. At defender, number 16, Chris Effency. At defender, number 20, Enrique Joaquim. At forward, number 23, Sean, Sean Feld. At forward, number 29, Winston Haddock. At, goal, at goalkeeper, number 41, Jordan Allred. The Tornadoes are coached by Bradley Morrison and assisted by Kyle Kenny. Now the starting lineup for your North Greenville Crusaders. At goalkeeper, number zero, James Max Miller. At defender, number five, Lucas Gra Gravely. At midfielder, number eight, Morillo Matardia. At midfielder number 10, Victor Lobby. At forward number 12, Chris Inman. At forward number 14, Andre Sakar. At defender number 15, Doug Cordy. At defender number 16, Marion Evans. At 
Defender number 18, Jake Quinn. At, no at midfield number 21, Casey Brady. And at midfield number 26, Shores Vonek. Your Crusaders are coached by Chad Gefeller, and he, he is assisted by Kyle Walden and James Braddock. At this time, we ask that you please rise for the invocation and remain standing as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day you have given us. Keep us all safe from injury and let us play with good sportsmanship. Let us play for your glory above all. In Jesus' name, amen. So just about set to get this game underway. These two did play against each other last season at Brevard. At Brevard took that victory like two to Travelers. nothing. The rain has Eight stopped, pieces, thankfully. Our equipment was, yeah, I was getting legitimately worried for a minute because this equipment was not gonna last too much longer. It is our request that you support the officials and participants in this contest in a positive manner. Profanity, racial or sexist comments or other derogatory actions directed at student athletes, coaches, officials or team representatives will not be tolerated and our grounds are removable from Pepsi Stadium. In addition, tobacco products and or alcohol beverages are not permitted anywhere on campus. Thank you for cooperation and we hope you, have, you enjoyed today's match. Quick uh, college football update. North Green, no, excuse me, North Carolina leading South Carolina 10 to seven. For North Greenville, Charleston Southern leading the Crusaders six to nothing in the first quarter, just a minute and six seconds taken off the clock. So that was a must have been a quick drive for Charleston Southern. But meanwhile, we are underway here in Tigerville. Greenville trying to get a possession together. Chris Inman, the ball's gonna be passed to Lucas Gravely. Back to Gravely now. And kicked away by Brevard, but it heads out of bounds, so it'll be North Greenville ball. Gravely threw it in to number 10, Victor Labby. And now it goes back to Brevard. Don't think North Greenville agreed. So 
So for Brevard, number five, Omar Jimenez had the ball, but just passed it to the other defender, and now it'll be passed again. So we'll see what Brevard's made of here. And quick breakaway. Number 23, Jacob Crisp has an opportunity, but it's going to be kicked out of bounds. Now it goes back to Gravely. Brevard and North Greenville look to be setting the pace high at the beginning of this game as we go into it. Number 26, Georges Van Eck knocked it out of bounds, so it goes back to Brevard. And that one's knocked out still with Brevard. Now cleared by the Crusaders. So now will be kicked down the field by the, the Tornadoes near the sideline. And it's going to be knocked out of bounds by the Crusaders. Doug Cordy for the Crusaders, making sure that no Brevard player was getting to that ball before it went out. Tempted header there. And heads out, and it'll go to Brevard. Back to the goalkeeper. Brevard being aggressive on defense, definitely showing some press. Trying to sneak up from behind, almost got there. Crusaders get it to midfield. Greenville trying to come up with a solid possession. That seemed like last year they could get it down the field without much of an issue, but once they got it down there, just couldn't do much with the ball. So that's definitely something to see if they can improve this season. Whistle does blow, and it's going to go to Brevard. So Brevard with the free kick right at around midfield. We'll get it to the near side. And Brevard will hang on to it. May have an opportunity batted away by the Crusaders. But now Brevard collects it, and here is an early shot off the post. But a nice attempt by the Tornadoes. They showed aggression, and they took that shot. And it almost paid off. We saw two shots by the women's team for the Tornadoes that one hit the, the left sidebar of the goal and then one hit the top bar. They've already seen one of those for the, the Tornadoes for the men's team. And some, some big contact there and it'll stay with the Crusaders. Again, the rain has come to a stop, came out of nowhere, right near the end of the women's game. Hopefully that won't be an issue for the rest of the night, but I think it did enough to uh, get the field a bit wet, so we'll see if uh, we'll see if field conditions are any issue today. Hey, hey, 
So here's a kick to midfield. North Greenville trying to get a solid possession, but Brevard takes over the ball. going to head out and stay with the Tornadoes. So as it heads down the field, just inches away from a corner kick, but instead, actually no, it will be North Greenville's ball. Bavar is continually bringing the attack with their offense right now, really putting putting the Crusaders on their heels. Yeah, they're definitely showing aggression here early in the first half. But now the Crusaders will end up with the ball, knocked out of bounds by the Tornadoes. But goes right back to Brevard, but the whistle will blow, and it goes back to North Greenville. Crusaders get it to midfield. Still alive with the ball. Chris Inman had the ball and was tripped up, and the whistle does blow. Stays with North Greenville. Casey Brady to kick it. And that one deflected off of a Brevard player, and that one's knocked away. And oh, player tripped up and the whistle blows. Some hard contact there. All right, so Brevard now with the ball yet again. Trying to get it to midfield. But it heads out of bounds, so the Crusaders taking over. Trying to find a breakaway. Brevard player knocks it out of bounds to prevent numbers. Ball movement will be very key here for this game for the Crusaders as they look to continue to for their first score of the season. Quick college football update. Well, I was going to say that the uh, game between South Carolina and North Carolina was tied at 10, but it looks like North Carolina just got a field goal, so they lead it 13-10 to 10 with a minute and 44 remaining in the second quarter for North Greenville football against Charleston Southern. Charleston Southern still leads 6 to nothing in the first quarter. So the ball heads out. We'll stay with North Greenville. Heads out yet again, but this time it goes to the Tornadoes. So things have slowed down a little bit over the last couple of minutes. Crusaders, well, tried to get it to midfield, but taken over by Brevard. But 
gets away from him. And now the Tornadoes may have an opportunity. Trying to get around the defense, unable to do so, and it's kicked away by the Crusaders, but goes right back to where it originally was. North Greenville not showing too much of an aggressive defense. And that one heads out of bounds. Stays with Brevard. And that's going to head out on the Crusaders, so that's going to be a corner kick for the Tornadoes. Let's see if they can take advantage. And they decide not to take the shot and instead just try to get a possession. Had an opportunity there. And a couple of Brav excuse me, a couple of Brevard players just flat out missed it. Oh, so close for Brevard on that play coming in. So North Greenville takes over. 31 minutes, 24 seconds remaining in the first half. North Greenville taking their time, not not showing too much aggression right now. But as long as they can keep it scoreless, that's not a problem. And some contact, no, and the whistle does blow and there was some contact there also. So things getting interesting. The initial contact was between the two tens. For Brevard, number 10 is Camilo Sosa. For the Crusaders, number 10 is Victor Labby. So Andrew Galowich gets the ball off, but he's going to kick it out of bounds. Crusaders get in position. Gets the ball down the field, but not going to be able to do much with it. So it's hit, not back, and it's going to stay with the Crusaders. And that ball is going to head out as well. This time it goes to Brevard. And the whistle blew. Looks like a free kick is in place. This could be a big momentum shift in the game for North Greenville Crusaders as they get this free kick opportunity. Yeah, we'll see if they can take advantage. Didn't see exactly what happened. Didn't appear that there was a ton of contact, but apparently just enough to draw to draw the foul. And here's the shot. A header, and it's just wide left. Almost had it. So a couple opportunities for both teams, but so far in this game, but it still remains scoreless. Here comes Brevard. But North Greenville right there. And now they head down the field. And but it's going to head out of bounds. Let's 
And it looks like Charleston Southern has taken a 13 to nothing lead on the Crusaders. Still late in the first quarter. So this one kicked far down the field. Crusaders take control of it. And Rivard cannot keep it from going out. So North Greenville with the corner kick with 27 minutes remaining in this first half. And they do take the shot this time. And ball batted into the air. North Greenville retains possession of the ball. But not anymore, here comes Brevard. And but I think he kicked it a little too far. No, it's saved by Jacob Crisp. And they're gonna have an opportunity, an attempted header ended up a little bit too high. And it's a, a save attempt, couldn't come up with it. And whatever the call was, it's gonna be North Greenville's ball. I think maybe there was a, might've been a handball there or something, I'm not quite sure, but North Greenville ends up with it, but Brevard Trying to come up with the possession, but it will be knocked out of bounds. So the Crusaders have it at midfield, trying to do something with the ball. And nope, going to be taken over by Brevard again, and it's going to be knocked out. At the beginning of the game, Crusaders came up with a back line of four guys in their back box for their defense. But as it looks like they're starting to turn over for a little more attack, they've brought out two. So it's starting to get a little interesting as they look to more on their attacking side of offense coming down this stretch of the half. Yeah, I mentioned earlier that they had seemed pretty conservative, but um, now are looking to be a little more aggressive apparently. We'll see if it pays off. But meanwhile, it'll be kicked back to the goalie. Now it'll be kicked to the near side to Van Eck. And got away from the Crusaders, but it'll be knocked out by Brevard. Knocked out by Brevard yet again. So the Crusaders hanging on to the ball. Brevard showing some solid defense. They, they have not let the Crusaders get too close to that goal. And that's gonna head out of bounds. It will be Brevard ball. Added into the air yet again. Crusaders take control for now, but it will head out of bounds. And it looks like it's gonna remain in the possession of North Greenville.
For VAR defense, coming with a little more different look, a little different set than they've had. They've pulled four guys on the bottom line defense and keeping three out to so attack the ball. So it's getting a little interesting as they, as again, the game's winding down to the half. Yeah, still a long way to go, though. Still over 22 minutes remaining, so should be interesting. Both teams, though, on both sides of the ball for defense is really just using almost like a wall feature with the four guys in the back line. That really helps keeping away from people getting uh, any kind of cross shots over the top and really kind of keeping the ball a little more, having to play a little more small ball. Yeah, it's definitely been successful so far today. As you can see, it's still scoreless. Now running the game for the Crusaders, Johnny Lynn. So Johnny Lynn comes in for North Greenville. Now comes over to the near side, Lucas Gravely. And now North Greenville doing a good job of moving the ball. As the lights start to come, come on here at Pepsi Stadium. It'll head out of bounds and it's gonna be a corner kick. Brevard thought it was out on the Crusaders but the officials did not buy it and so the Crusaders have an opportunity. It's going to be number 10, Victor Labby, with the corner kick. And here it is, a header. And there's a goal for the Crusaders, right down the middle. A nice pushback shot coming from the Crusaders. Great position by the Crusaders in that setup for the corner kick. Uh, being ready for any ball get pushed get, has been pushed out like that. So just like the women's game, here in the men's game, North Greenville strikes first. Still waiting to get on get a number on the player who scored. We'll let you know as soon as we find that out. Are looking to strike back, and they might be able to here, and that is going to be a little bit too high. Pavard able to penetrate the Crusader defense on that run going down. But the shot again, like we said, is too high. And for the Crusaders, it was number 21, Casey Brady, freshman from Cary, North Carolina. So that's a good way to start your career, your college career that is, with the first goal of the season for your team. Batted away, and here come the Crusaders again. And it's gonna be knocked away by Brevard. Nice defense, but a good job by number 14, Andres Kacker just to get in position to potentially score there. Yeah, that's gonna be knocked out of bounds, so it goes back to Brevard. Just over 19 minutes remaining here in the first period. Now, North Greenville's in an interesting, excuse me, an interesting situation right now. If you looked at the schedule from last year, you might have noticed that at no point last season did they score more than one goal in a game. So we'll see if they can do that here tonight. That is a clear indication of progress. So I'm sure they'll look to do that. And 
here they go, still on the attack, trying to keep it in bounds, and they will do so. It's going to be batted away by the Tornadoes, and they'll take possession. And it's going to be an offside call. So it'll go back to the Tornadoes. Varden not showing a ton of aggression here. Sort of taking their time, waiting for their opportunity, but the whistle does blow. It's going to go back to the Crusaders. comes Brevard. And a pretty obvious offside call. Pretty much the entire North Greenville team raising their hands to signify that. So now Brevard showing some aggression on defense. Or 23, Jacob Crisp, he's been all over the Crusaders. Even when they're just sort of calmly passing the ball around, he's right there to put pressure on them. Brevard with the ball again. And loses it for just a moment, and contact. No call. Or yeah, yeah, there is. Okay, now there's a call. So just a foul, no yellow card or anything like that. So the Crusaders take control. Now number eight, Gabriel Garcia is the one putting pressure. No, nope, that's number nine, Andrew Galowich. So this one kicked down the sideline, going to head out of bounds. North Greenville arguing that it's their possession, and it will be, it looks like. Whistle blows, and now it will go back to Brevard. Greenville continuing to put pressure now on Brevard. But the Tornado is trying to move up the field, see if they can do that here. Still plenty of time here in the first half, 13.45 remaining. And here they go, Galowich with the ball. And passes it to the side and can't do anything with it. 
A great cut by Galowich, number nine for Bavar, going in with that cross pass. Yeah, it was intended for number 23, Jacob Crisp, but just couldn't quite get to the ball in time. So Brevard's had opportunities, just haven't quite been able to capitalize on them. comes in for North Greenville. Gets it to midfield and we'll see what they can do with it. 12.38 remaining in the first half. And goes right to Crisp. And a breakaway may have an opportunity, gets the shot off, but it's gonna be just to the right. Brevard wants a call, but they don't get it. Ryan McPhillips comes in for Camilo Sosa for the Tornadoes. Again, Brevard, Brevard with another pressure on the Crusaders offense. So heads out. Greenville takes over. Now it's just going to be cleared. I believe the goalkeeper for the Crusaders is Mateo Barzola. Believe it's number. Believe that number one is their is the Crusaders goalkeeper. Brevard gets it to Caleb Hall. And North Greenville is going to knock it out, so Brevard will have a corner kick coming up. Like almost every every uh, off offensive possession that Brevard has had, they've used great intensity and great speed to be able to outman the Crusaders on their defense. Looks like... Uh, during the next stoppage of play, number 17 for Brevard, Alexander Gerondakakis will come in and there is a Crusader, but his number is hidden from us currently, so I think they're about to come in now. So there goes Gerondakakis. And for the Crusaders, it will be Number nine, Brandon Harrison. Jaron Dukakis came in for number 23, Adam Jacob Crisp. And Harrison came in for number eight, Murillo Mataragia. Brevard with possession yet again. Yeah. 
quick update. Charleston Southern has gone up on North Greenville 20 to nothing. That game's in the second quarter with 9.49 remaining. So both teams fighting for the ball. Brevard with it now and some contact from behind, but Brevard hangs on to it. Number seven, Ryan McPhillips with the ball and it will be knocked out of bounds. So North Greenville takes over. Lucas Gravely throws it in. Whistle blows. And it's gonna go back to Brevard. Greenville got a header on the ball and was able to knock it to the other side and now might have an opportunity. And Andres Cocker lost the ball. It's looking like weather from earlier, a little bit of rain we had from the women's game starting to come into play with a little bit more of a slippery field. Yeah, possibly. And a header and a shot attempt, but goes to the other side of the field and North Greenville will clear it. And some hard contact. And there is a North Greenville player down. Player being helped up appears to be okay. So that one goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Crusaders. So Crusaders hanging with the ball at midfield. And it's gonna be knocked out of bounds. So Brevard takes possession with five minutes remaining in the half. Brevard's speed has been a lot of a big key to a lot of the drives that they've been having going down the other side of the field and having all the off offensive possessions that they've been able to keep. So now they'll just clear the ball and Crusaders take over, but haven't gotten it away from the Tornadoes yet. Now they do. So now Brevard trying to charge down the field and gets away. Now it comes to the near side for number nine, Andrew Galowich. A shot attempt, but knocked away by the Crusaders. And they'll clear the ball again. And contact, and it's gonna go back to Brevard.
Russell blows yet again. Official having a word with a Crusader, Doug Cordy. It will stay with the Crusaders. Crusaders, nice possession so far. Doing a good job of getting the ball around. Slowly but surely getting it down the field. And it's going to be knocked out of bounds. So a corner kick coming up for the Crusaders. comes the kick and Rivard able to get it away from the goal and they will clear it and it'll head out of bounds. Crusaders maybe trying to come up with one final quality possession before the half comes to an end. Just over a minute. Taking their time, do you think they'll try one more, one more charge down the field before this half ends? And heard somebody has heard one of the players say, "Let's go!" So it's time. Here come the Crusaders. David Becerra with the ball right now gets it to another Crusader, and it's going to be deflected by Brevard, and they get it down the field. And now maybe Brevard will have one more opportunity. Again, this is another area where speed for Rivard will come in key. Rivard player tripped up. It will remain with the Tornadoes. And 10 seconds. They're just going to have to try a long shot here. They're not going to have enough time to get it down the field. And here it is. And not going to be near far enough. So the half will come to an end. The Crusaders lead it 1-0. So we will be, excuse me, we will be back for the second half in just a little while. You are watching the North Greenville Sports Network.
So as the second half is just about set to get underway, North Greenville with a one to nil lead over Brevard. The goal was scored by number 21, Casey Brady. And uh, do want to thank uh, France06 is the username. Um, for a correction, uh, we've been saying that number 23 for Brevard is Jacob Crisp. Uh, that was a mistake. It's actually Sean Schoenfeld. So we apologize for making that mistake and uh, hopefully won't make it again. But never can guarantee it, so we'll see. <laughs> So second half is underway just like that. So we'll see if Brevard can res respond. But meanwhile, here come the Crusaders to start off the second half. Might be able to get a shot off. And it's going to go to Brevard, but Crusaders hanging on to it. And it's going to head out of bounds, so an early opportunity for the Crusaders. It'll be a corner kick. Crusaders earlier in the game, on the first half, got a, their first points of the season off this uh, corner kick. So we're seeing they can relive the magic again. Crusaders sent up in the corner. Shot is off. A nice header, oh, but wide right for the Crusaders. Yeah, the last time the Crusaders have scored more than one goal in a match, they have to go back to 2013, their final game of that season against Belmont Abbey. They lost four to two. So it's been a while, but this Crusader team definitely looks much improved over last year's team, so I'm sure they can get that done. Might not need a second goal if they can hang on to this one to nothing lead. But as aggressive as Brevard has shown at times, one goal might not quite be enough, but we'll see, you never know. Charleston Southern leading North Greenville in football 20 to seven at the end of the first half. And North Carolina still beating South Carolina 13 to 10 about halfway through the third quarter. Crusaders moving the ball down the field at a pretty effective rate coming down. But Bavard is taking it back. And they're moving down quickly with the speed that they have. Ball, ball's been hanging around midfield for a little while now. Get a team able to come up with a breakaway. But here comes Brevard. Get it to North Greenville's side, but it will head out of bounds, so it'll be a goal kick. Still coming out with that four men in the backfield, trying to keep the Crusaders on the opposite side. Going down the side with the ball, number eight on the Crusaders side. He's breaking. It's Marillo Mataragia. 
believe that ball bounced off of one of the officials. But Brevard with the ball now. Go to number 29, Winston Haddock. Now to midfield. Crusaders keeping the ball in bounds, just barely. But here comes Brevard. But the Crusaders get the ball back and will be able to get it close to the goal of Brevard. And it's going to be battered away by Brevard and they take over the ball. And now they will get it down the field to the North Greenville goalkeeper. going to head out of bounds, so it will go to Brevard. Go back to the goalkeeper and he will clear the ball. And a header. Crusader number 12, Chris Inman, tried to get to that ball but couldn't quite and it heads out of bounds so it'll stay with Brevard. Batted high into the air. Vard hangs with it. And now Brevard had an opportunity. Trying to retain possession, but cannot. Here goes the Crusaders. And some contact there, but no whistle. And it'll stay with Brevard, it looks like. A clean side ta uh, slide tackle coming out of the Crusader defense there. To slow down the Brevard attack. Whistle blows and now it will go to North Greenville. Brevard trying to keep the possession going. They still trail it one to nil, took a shot, but it's high. So Brevard starting to take opportunities, but hasn't been able to get anything going yet. saying it put more pressure on him so that's what they did and there's contact there but 
No whistle blown, so play continues. Greenville lost the ball there, so the Tornadoes with the ball yet again. Contact by on Schoenfeld. Got it right that time, but um, not able to do much with it. Bavard again coming out with that attack mode. It looks like what they're doing is keeping their uh, three top attackers on the top and looking for uh, on the fringes for the lanes. And it was some contact there, but no whistle. Another more clean sliding tackles. So it heads out of bounds, Brevard takes over. And some contact and yeah, an obvious push there. Again, Brevard looking for the fringes, waiting for the lane to open with some uh, conservative passing. Yeah, not showing any urgency at all. Just they're they're still being patient, but you know, still over half an hour remaining in this game. So I mean, they have plenty of time, but at some point they're going to really have to go on the attack. Taken away, and Tornado is able to keep it. Cross kick. And, yeah, it was kicked a little too far there. It's going to head out of bounds and be in the possession of the Crusaders. Momentum for both teams seems to be at a standstill with a lot of a lot of just short passes and a lot of uh, and a lot of little things going on. Yeah, maybe conserving energy a little bit here as both teams start to prepare for the end of this game. Like I said, still over 30 minutes remaining, so still plenty of time. Crusaders with a little bit of a breakaway. Heads out of bounds. And it will remain with North Greenville. That one heads out. Brevard ball. Taking the ball to the far side. Again, still being patient, not showing urgency. And 
And trying to keep it in bounds, a wall of Crusaders there just in case he did. And this one kicked down the field. It's going to head out, so it will go back to the Tornadoes. Rivard does get it to the Crusaders' side. Crusaders knock it back. And here's going to be a shot. It's going to be wide left. Another great lane for Brevard to shoot right down. But again, wide left. Brevard's going to need more drives like that on the offensive side of the ball if they're going to be able to continue to put pressure on Crusaders' defense. And not. So the call goes against North Greenville. It's going to end up Brevard Ball. Getting it to the Crusaders side, and the flag's taken out. Stays with Brevard. So just over 28, rem 28 minutes remaining. Again, if you just joined us recently, North Greenville women's soccer did defeat Brevard 1-0. And as you can see, North Greenville men's soccer currently leading 1-0 as well. But looking to add to it. They do have numbers. It's a three on two currently. And not able to get the shot off. Smarties instincts by the goalie for Brevard to come out of the box and jump on it and not let the guy have an opportunity to put it right in. For the Crusaders, it was number 14, Andres Kacker, who had an opportunity there but just couldn't quite get to the ball in time. And at this point, you would have to think that if North Greenville goes up by two goals, it's going to be awfully tough for Brevard to come back. So Brevard absolutely had to keep North Greenville from scoring that. So the whistle blows as it heads out of bounds again. Ball will go to, to the Crusaders. And contact made. Crusader goes down and there's going to be a call against Brevard. There 
is a Crusader player still down. Appears to be okay as he gets back up. North Greenville's looking at a free kick here. And shot back out by Brevard. And it'll be cleared. So here it goes down the field. Brevard takes possession of it. It's out of bounds, and it will be in the possession of North Greenville. Farge still showing patience. Still no urgency as of yet. As they get it down the field, trying to come up with some sort of opportunity and ball's gonna stay in bounds. Crusaders take over. Crusaders getting the ball down the field. See if they can keep it in bounds here. And, and contact made. The ball heads out of bounds. It looks like Brevard will take the ball. So not enough contact there apparently to draw the foul. Brevard is, pre is pressing on defense. We can see with that with the last drive that the Crusaders had as they continue to put pressure on Crusaders. Heads back to the Crusaders. And oh, they correct himself, so it does go back to the Tornadoes, apparently. And Brevard Player number 16 tripped up on the play. That's Chris Efinetsi. Still plenty of time for Brevard. Still over 20 minutes remaining, but We'll have to show a more aggressive side as this game starts to come to a close. But for now, North Greenville is showing some aggression. Still trying to add to their 1-0 lead. Goes to Brevard, contact made. And 
and may have a shot here. Brevard has a chance. They keep it from going out, and here's a shot, and it's going to go to the near side and out of bounds. Another risky cross shot given by the Brevard Tornadoes as they come in to the final 20 minutes. So it seems like they're trying to find their lanes, trying to find playing off the fringe. Um, but we need to see some more attack out of them as we come down. Brevard with the ball again, but now it goes to the Crusaders. And now back to Brevard, but can't hang on to it. Save from going out of bounds. And heads out of bounds, so Brevard takes over. North Greenville looking to hang on if they can. This would be North Greenville's first win since September 21st, 2013. They won at Mount Olive two to one. As the whistle blows and looks like the call is gonna go against the Crusaders. Call for a push. Bavar setting it up for a uh, free kick. Seems like, or no, maybe, yeah, free yeah, kick. Yeah, it'll be a free kick. Free kick, correct. And deflected, it's gonna, no, it actually will stay in bounds. Brevard trying to hang on to it. North Greenville pressuring. Brevard being forced to back up and now North Greenville takes over. And a breakaway, may have an opportunity here. And gets the shot off and just another cross shot, didn't quite make it. But a great job by number 26, Georges Van Eck for the effort. It will be another a, another corner kick for the Crusaders, however, so Brevard not out of it yet. I believe it's number 10, Victor Labby, who will take the corner. Good looking kick, attempted save, but Brevard does end up with the ball and they clear it. It'll be a goal kick for the Tornadoes. Quick football update, nothing's changed since our last update. Charleston Southern still beating North Greenville 20 to seven. The third quarter is just now underway. And North Carolina still leading South Carolina 13 to 10. Fourth quarter just started. Ball heads out of bounds. It will stay with Brevard. A long pass, try to get something going, but the Brevard player fell and it's gonna be knocked out of bounds by the Crusaders. And it looks like a Crusader is cramping up. Had to figure that was going to be was going to be an impact at some point. It was a pretty hot day here in Tigerville. Plus, with that little bit of rain we had, it 
certainly increase the humidity. Clock did stop at 1627. Here come the Crusaders. They had numbers for just a moment. A little too strong of the push for the Crusaders going down on the offensive drive. Ball's going to head out of bounds. Nope, not quite. Still fighting for it. Several Crusaders and a Brevard player. And the Crusaders come out on top. They do end up with the possession. Brevard still keeping the pressure they've had on almost all game up on the Crusaders. And a push. Whistle blows, and it will stay with the Crusaders. And pushed again. And the official going to have a word with the Brevard player that was for Brevard number eight, Gabriel Garcia. Brevard's starting to run out of time. Going to have to get something going. And tripped up. No whistle blown, it goes out of bounds. So 13.40 remaining here tonight. Still fighting for the ball. Brevard ends up with it. And Brevard sees an opportunity, a header, and saved. Beautiful save. Close call for the Crusaders, but just able to keep that ball out of the goal, and the shutout is still intact. Brevard, and whistle blows, and it goes to Brevard. May have another opportunity, and ends up being saved again. Brevard looking for a call, but did not get it. 12 and a half remaining. Brevard is starting to get desperate as they continue to put shots on goal. Yeah, you, you can see the aggressiveness has increased over the last few minutes. Understandably so. That ball head out of bounds. Crusaders maintain possession at this point, and oh, an attempted shot ends up just wide right. But at this point, the 
more the Crusaders have possession of the ball, the more time goes off the clock. And that's certainly what they're looking for. Yeah, Rivard getting frustrated now. Missed that, missed the ball, just kind of waved his arms up. Certainly not too late, but they are definitely running short on time. Gonna get a shot off, a header, and it's in for the goal. Still waiting to see the number. But whatever the case, North Greenville goes up two to nil. And North Greenville calling for a yellow card. Not getting it though. That header we just saw for our second goal here in the game tonight came from number 26, Soros Van Eck. A beautiful header. He was also the one who had the break coming out. Yeah, we've called his name several ago. times tonight, yep. so he's, he's certainly had a good game. Yep, he's certainly risen up and accepted the challenge. So now it's full on desperation mode for Brevard. Being down one nil is tough enough, but when you're down two with less than 10 minutes remaining, makes it awfully tough to come back. Whistle blows. Yeah, scoreboard's still showing one for the Crusaders, but did not see anything about the goal being called off. blows again. And we apologize, but we missed the offsides call, so there was no goal. So it's still 1-0. So still a nice job by Van Eck, but won't be credited with the goal. Um, can't believe we missed that, so sorry about that. But it is still 1-0, so Brevard not out of it yet. North Greenville trying to show some aggressiveness. Nice save. That ball heads out of bounds. Just under seven and a half minutes remain. And a header and a great save. That ball was right in the upper corner and he was robbed of a goal. A great extension by the uh, Crusader goalie, be able to get up and get out for that goal. Be able to snag it out of the air. With six minutes and 45 seconds left, it's still anybody's game. And Bavar is still coming on the attack. Thank <laughs> you. 
Crusader goalie James Max Miller has had a brilliant day today. So now heads back down the field. Six minutes remaining. Can the Crusaders hang on? Thought for a minute that they had the game pretty much won when a goal that was scored turned out to not count because of an offside call. Meanwhile, the whistle blows again. Do you have a scoring update? Charleston Southern has now gone up 27 to seven in the third quarter with 9.42 remaining. And for, for South Carolina and North Carolina, North, uh, South Carolina now leading 17 to 13 with 11.46 remaining in the fourth quarter. Crusaders still have possession. It's continuing to eat that clock. Yeah, the Crusaders have done a great job of preventing a charge by Brevard. Just haven't had a lot of those in the second half. And still fighting for the ball. Tornadoes still have possession. And that one heads out of bounds. So just under four minutes remain. But here comes Brevard with the header, and it's in. Brevard answering the bell at the answering with, at the late at the bell. Well, it took a while, but Brevard finally responds. It was scored by number 20, Henrique Joaquim, a freshman from Jundai, Brazil. So a brilliant play there, ties it all up. Crusaders have got to be on high alert now with the game getting tied in the closing minutes. Yeah, you saw the aggressiveness by Brevard and you figured at some point they were going to break through and it that turned out to be the case. The Crusaders have to match the intensity. And so meanwhile, here comes Brevard again, but it's knocked out of bounds. And we promise the goal does count this time. So it is indeed one to one. Just want to make that clear. Quick reminder as we are start starting to close this game out, but maybe not. Brevard moving the ball well. Quick reminder of the overtime rules should that happen. Overtime is sudden death. There are up to two overtime periods. And if no team leads after those two periods, then it ends in a draw. But meanwhile, here come the Crusaders trying to come up with a goal here very late in this game, but it's going to be cleared by the Tornadoes. There's a good look down the lane, but they had too much of a push on the ball. Push too far beyond this player for the Crusaders. And 
Couple of players fighting for the ball, stays with Brevard. North Greenville's led for the majority of this game. But all of a sudden, Brevard has the momentum. The question is, can the Crusaders hang on and force an overtime? So here comes the shot. And that one's gonna be way left. Bar's gonna get another chance at it though if the corner kick's set up. Corner. Not gonna go for the shot this time. They're gonna try to set up a play and saved and North Greenville able to keep Brevard out of the goal just barely. Max Miller might be a little shaken up. Not sure if he got kicked in the stomach or something like that, but he appears to be okay now. As there are just 40 seconds remaining. Getting late in Tigerville, but we might not be done yet. Almost nine o'clock. Meanwhile, the whistle blows for an injury timeout with 17 seconds remaining. So it looks like we are heading to overtime. Three seconds remaining. And that will do it. So 90 minutes is not enough. We will have at least one overtime period. Again, overtime is sudden death. So whatever team scores first is declared the winner. What an exciting game it's been so far with so many shots on goal with originally the bar keeping the bar and the Crusader defense keeping Brevard out of the box. But now Brevard's late game instincts has come back to tie it up one to one. An amazing game to watch. So it'll be a five minute break. So uh, we'll return in just a couple moments. Uh, you're watching the North Greenville Sports Network.
So the first overtime period is now underway. Again, there are two overtime periods. They are both sudden death. There are no penalty shots should the game remain tied. Uh, that is for postseason and I believe conference tournament play. But for regular season games, there are no penalty shots. Bavar looking like they're gonna get the first opportunity with the ball sitting on their half. Here it goes, and just over the goal. Close call there. A great game plan by Bernard to throw it all the way over the top and head it back, but not just not enough. Both overtime periods are 10 minutes long. And again, sudden death. So as soon as one goal is scored, the game is over. But if nobody scores after either overtime period, then the game comes to an end as a draw. Here go the Crusaders, may have an opportunity. And shots off and saved. Nice attempt by North Greenville, still showing aggressiveness. They were barely hanging on at the end of the second period. But now showing some offense. During these overtimes, this is when both teams got to step up their game again because you can be getting a little tired, but you got to fight through. Because especially with the one, whoever scores next to the winner, right. that should be a big motivation. North Greenville off sides. Brevard takes over. with the steal coming down the field again. Looking for the long pass, but cleared by the Crusaders. Crusaders looking for a big push. And ball gets away just for a moment, but Brevard able to keep it, but going to have a, an injury timeout Appears to be cramping. Not a surprise this late into the game. And they get settled back in after that injury timeout coming up. Brevard with the ball, giving it back to the Crusaders. Crusaders are going to start with the ball then, and we will be underway. Crusaders looking for, again, another strong drive. A strong drive down the lanes, just like they had a moment before.
Nice footwork going on by the Crusaders. Got tripped up there. The wet turf still seems to be an issue. Long shot attempt that's gonna be to the left of the goal. So a goal kick by Brevard. Bavar beginning their offensive drive. That's going to head out. If it's on North Greenville, it's a corner kick. And it looks like it's going to be. Let's see what strategy that Bavar comes out with the corner kick. If they're going to take it long or if they're going to pass it in. They always seem to have something up their sleeve. Kick is up. Brevard still with the possession. Crusaders running down the lane. Got the ball back. And just Brevard able to just prevent the goal from being scored, but not out of it yet, but the ball is going to head out of bounds. So play continues. Bavar's goalies have been running out of the box a lot lately with the attack of the Crusaders coming so viciously. But Bavar with his own chance right now as they set up. Going out to the right side of the field by the end line and boosted back out by the Crusaders. So heads out and goes to the Crusaders. Just under three minutes remaining. And Brevard with it again, easy save by Max Miller. Scary moment. Contact made with the goalie. No call, ball stays in play. And yeah, number 41, Jordan Allred came over to get that ball. But made contact with a Crusader and now another Brevard player on the ground cramping up again. And that's number seven for Brevard, that's Ryan McPhillips. So cramping becoming a major issue here tonight. Just over a minute and a half remaining in this first overtime period. Bavar with momentum coming down the field. The seem, just can't seem to hold it together. Crusaders pump the ball back the other way. Still 
And a shot attempt, easy save by Max Miller. Vard still with the ball though. Clear attempt by North Greenville. And a long shot taken by Brevard. Maybe it's a sign of desperation. Crusaders looking at another offensive turnover, or offensive turnaround, as they come in to 17 seconds. And might have a last second attempt and off the post, in! North Greenville wins, just like that. Oh, what an amazing play, amazing play. Oh. Off both posts and goes in. I think we can say that's the first time that's ever happened in North Greenville men's soccer history. Both posts for a game winner. Oh my goodness. Brevard dejected, understandably so. A crushing loss for them, but what a win for the Crusaders. And we said it earlier, their first win since September 21st, 2013. So this is a major moment for the Crusaders, and they win it 2-1, to one, an unbelievable last-minute goal. Or actually, last-second goal. That was with the, uh, the, the clock currently showing three seconds, but the game is indeed over because it is sudden death. The Crusaders men coach have to be so excited, so excited to start their season off with the right foot hey, with a win. We got some good highlight film, so. Always a good, good night here in Tigerville. And we'll be right back. I think we are going to have a quick interview with head coach Chad Gefeller, and we'll be right back here on the North Greenville Sports Network. As we return, new sideline reporter Ansley is going to is uh, currently waiting on head coach Chad Gefeller. Not sure if he's going to be available or not. And it looks like he is. So let's go to Ansley. Unfortunately, our looks like our sideline microphone not currently working. And we're going to get someone on that real quick. But anyway, as we uh, wait on that unbelievable game, again, uh, that final shot hit one, hit one sidebar then the other sidebar, then went in for the goal. So just unbelievable. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to get that interview. So, oh well, we'll have it next time. But anyway, Crusaders do win the game, two to one, and they start the season one and oh. All right, so that will do it. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast and uh, hope to see you next time. Our next broadcast is soccer again next week. So we hope you tune in then and hope you enjoyed this broadcast here on the North Greenville Sports Network. Have a good night.